Hello everybody, welcome to RB&D Reviews. I'm Rob. And I'm Dave. And today uh, we're continuing our look at the J.R.L. Tolkien cartoon adaptations of his books. Uh, last time, as you know, Dave and I reviewed The Hobbit, and now mm -hmm. we're going to be reviewing the 1978 film from Ralph Bakshi, The Lord of the Rings, which, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of backstory behind it, it's made up of uh, the F Fellowship of the Ring and half of the Two Towers, if my memory serves me right. right. Yeah. And so it runs a little over two hours, and um, it was done through a process called rotoscoping, where um, Bakshi filmed live action stand-ins, and then he had the animators trace them, or in some cases they merely paint, it was because they were shot in black and white, they mainly painted, painted them in to look like Andy Warhol's paintings a little right. bit. Right. So, um... That's, so, that's what he used to do with a lot of his movies. Mm -hmm. Like, you're a big fan of him. What other uh, movies have you seen from him that you like? You said Fritz the Cat and... Fritz the Cat, which is about a, uh, a cat that's like, well, it, it's, it's like animals, like, living like humans, basically, and it takes place in the 60s, and it's about this cat named Fritz and he's kind of a, uh, a drug addict and a loner and a downer and a and a, uh, a hypocrite and everything. Yeah. And when we first started this channel you reviewed Wizards and this, yeah. that's the movie that got Bakshi's funding for this movie. Now the original plan, before, uh, before we go into detail about what we thought of the movie, the original plan was he wanted to make three films for each movie like Peter Jackson did but the studio's like, no you're only going to be making two movies. So that meant that he had to combine all three books into two movies, and as you know, that didn't happen. Uh, let the mo this movie, um, we'll talk about why that didn't happen later on. Let's talk about the movie. What did you, you think of Lord of the Rings, the cartoon? I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, it's it's different type of animation from the uh, from the Hobbit and from the other one, The Return of the King, later. But um, yeah, this this is like really neat. The whole like setting and everything and the. The, all the uh, the actors that did the voices were perfect in this. Mm. Well, my take on it is is that I did I did like the look of these characters and the animation much better than in The Hobbit. Um, it was like for me watching a J.R.R. Tolkien calendar, looking at the illustrations from that. Um, yeah. I did like the look of the characters better. Sometimes the animation was a little jerky to me, but that's probably yeah. because they shot live action. The animators traced their moves. Um, some of the characters didn't look right to me. Like Elrond looks like a human; he doesn't look like an elf. I thought Gollum looked. That is true. I thought Gollum looked much better here than he did in the Hobbit: and Return of the King. Like if you watch the cartoon versions of the Hobbit and the cartoon of the Return of the King, he looks mm -hmm. like an overgrown frog. Yeah, a green overgrown. In frog. this, he looks like a shaved gorilla, kind of. Well, well, here he looks like a someone that's definitely been abused and by the ring, so that I like that. But so the voices to me, except for John Hurt as Aragorn and Christopher Gard as Frodo, I didn't really like any of the voices. I, the, the one thing I liked about The mm. Hobbit and Return of the King, well, Return of the King is sort of a different story, but what I liked with the cartoon version of The Hobbit was all the voice cast that sounded really distinctive and very memorable to me. None of the voices in this one, except for those two, from in my opinion, were mm. quite as memorable. Uh, I, like, I like all the voices in here, especially Gandalf's. Yeah, he's he's not John Huston, but he he was, you know, good for the part. I didn't quite like the Gollum voice in this one. To me, he sounded like John Lennon talking to himself a little bit. Because I'm yeah, that is true. I didn't, I didn't really like the Gollum voice. I like the Gollum voice better in the uh, in the other two movies. Didn't like too much with Gandalf was in this cartoon. The he's very handy. Like he does a lot of stuff with the hands and shaking of the fists and all yeah. this other stuff. And the Houston cartoons, and to an extent in Jackson Stone, sometimes he just has to stand there and act like a big shot. He doesn't have to go all oh, hammer you over the top with the stairs and the fingers and the hands. Right. Over the top. And, and, the, the, and, the, and the gibberish talking. Yeah, well, I, I kind of like that that part when he's talking about one ring to rule all, one ring for, well, I don't know the words, but you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, but he's like, but he's like, hush, naz the patalu, and hush, naz the katalu, or whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. But I like and he's doing crazy stuff with his hands, and and then I like it when he he throws the ring in the fire, and then his and then Frodo's face is like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was some good stuff about it. Now let's talk about the film itself. Now that we sort of criticized and praised the animation and the, and all that, um, the movie moves. I thought started out very well. It moves briskly. There is a few slow spots here and there, but one thing I noticed was. When you, the tone for, well, I've always known this with the Jackson movies, but the tone between Fellowship and Two Towers are completely different. Like, 
with the, like the first 90 minutes feels one way because it's based on one book and the last 44 minutes feels completely different because it's more there's more it's a different direction I yeah it feel like it was one movie to me sometimes as a result of that yeah it, it, it does feel like that but um, yeah it is supposed to be split up like the first half hour of the movie is supposed to be um, fellowship and then uh, the two towers comes like near like the the almost middle, com and then towards the end, the re the rest of the movie, yeah. is, is two towers. Do you think trying to combine the f part the, of the first two books into one movie? Do you think it hurt that hurt it at all? Mm, maybe just a little bit, only because you can't really tell where where uh, Fellowship ends and Two Towers picks up unless you actually uh, like know your. Uh, your, your Lord of the Rings back to front, basically. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that got cut out of the movie, I guess, and I mean, the film, unfortunately, doesn't go into too much details like the Jackson movies do because of, you know, the combining of those two books, and as a result, there's a lot of characters saying story exposition, and there's some narration from Gandalf, and I didn't, because I felt like I didn't get a chance to feel for the characters, I felt that took me out of it as a viewer, as a result, and I, there were some confusing moments that, like you said, unless you've read the books, you probably know more about it, but I did enjoy the fight scenes, and I remember the first, I remember, I think I like this movie now than when I first saw it, because the first time uh, was like oh, 10 years ago, we were at your house, and you're like, hey, I got the Lord of the Rings, and we watched it, and I remember having a hard time sitting through watching it, but now, yeah. even though it's not a perfect movie, I think it, personally, I think it does show some faithfulness to Tolkien's spirit of the books. Yeah. Not a perfect movie, but I did enjoy it, but it does have its flaws. Yeah, it, um, I, because I, I first watched, the first time I ever found this movie was like at, uh, I found this actually at Blockbuster when they were open, still open by us, like long time ago, they had a, they had a, uh, adult cartoons section and whatnot, and I used to go through there, because they also had like a whole bunch of Japanese animation, but there was a lot of them that my parents wouldn't let me watch because I guess they were, I, I was too young at the time, but they let me see this one since it was PG, so I rented this one and, and ended up watching it. And, uh, I enjoyed it for the most part. Yeah. And why this movie didn't get, the War of the Rings didn't get done, there's different stories. One story I heard is that the film flopped, but based on the research I gathered, that's not true. Another story is uh, Bakshi, I found a quote from him saying that he felt like he put more into the movie than what he ended up taking out, meaning that he put all this energy into it and it just felt like it wasn't worth it quite as much as he thought it would be. Yeah. Um, another story is that the studio just wouldn't fund the second film, but either way, how he would have finished this trilogy, I don't know, we'll, we'll never know. Because I had heard that he had to go through a lot to get permission to even make this, really. It's, I can see that, yeah. they. I mean, Jackson and New Line had to go through a lot in order to get their live-action Hobbit made, so I, that's probably yeah. not a surprise. But unfortunately, um, the third film got, well, the trilogy got finished with Return of the King by Rankin Bass, but uh, well, that's, yeah. that's another video we'll do another time. Right. So. That one's more like the Hobbit movie, the same type of animation there, and the, the same character voices and whatnot, mm -hmm. except for the add-ins that weren't in the first movie. Yeah, well, well, that'll be our next video. So that's yeah. our video on the Lord of the Rings cartoon from Ralph Bakshi. It sounds like we got a mixed reaction from it. Next up, Return of the King. So wait, catch that video, and thank you very much for